Jeff Snowden, and I'm 52. I was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma. It's a normal skin cancer that you would probably get if you have fair skin and you know blonde hair, blue eye like I have. It had attached to my neck muscle. I end up having to do a neck dissection and take, remove all the lymph nodes on my left side, the neck muscle, jugular vein, everything. And then I was cancer free up until uh, February of 2015. I was working out. I noticed it in my armpit, a knot in my armpit, and thought maybe it was just a pulled muscle. And after biopsies and what have you, you know, it it turns out that it was it was coming back and it was more aggressive. I went to MD Anderson for another opinion down in Houston. Did rounds of chemo and um, it kept growing, it didn't go away. From the time I was waiting and going through chemo, it went from under my arm the size of a golf ball to the size of a grapefruit. When I had surgery and had that removed in uh, May of last year, 2015. I'm not afraid of a, a lot. I, I have pretty strong faith, but when you hear those words of, you know, someone telling you you've got cancer, you go, all right, you kind of grit your teeth and swallow hard and figure out how you're going to tell people. And the doctors down there uh, thought it was you know, had got all the cancer, had it removed, but as a precaution, you know, when I'm going through physical therapy through June and July, middle of August, probably I was going through radiation, I started noticing something coming up in my armpit under in the surgery area where it was, uh, you know, where it had been before. You know, I didn't think it was cancer, you know, coming back that quick. It'd only been 60 days, less than 60 days while I'm going through radiation for that area. So I'm thinking, you know, it's got to be something besides cancer. Well, it was the cancer, it began to grow externally went back down to md anderson they wanted to you know maybe try something else we thought there might be something else to try but at the end of the day the long story was they said you know they didn't have anything that would stop the growing of it it wasn't looking good as far as having any type of outcome my wife went down with me uh, the month a month later to do some uh, different tests to find out if maybe i can get into a, a test trial at that time they didn't have any trials that i could get into that were going to be starting soon enough. I left there with not a lot of hope in, you know, anything, you know, other than God, which I still firmly believed I've gonna be healed. It scares you enough if you wanna let it show or not, it's up to you, but you know, if you can hide it, you try to. I went to a uh, clinic in Mexico called the Hoxie Clinic. You know, the doctors are telling us that they don't have really anything that, you know, is working for me to cure this cancer, but God has a way and we, and we prayed and I, I said, God has a way to, to uh, heal me and he will and I will come out of this. Don't be negative, don't talk about negativity. Say thanks to God, thanks for your blessings, thank you for your healing. That's the only way I believe, that's what I told my family, that's what I told the kids. So I began taking the Hoxie. I had lost uh, down into 145 pound from 185 pounds. Hadn't been working, the tumor had grown you know, eight inches by seven inches, and it was on the outside, and it looked like a, you know, small Nerf football attached to my side, but it had got into my lungs at this point. We had been praying and keeping going and keep trying, keep praying, uh, and I firmly believe, and I absolutely believe I'm gonna be healed even at that point. Not everybody, I don't know that everyone else thought that, but I absolutely did. I began doing a new treatment uh, that we you know, my wife, you know, for the most part had talked our oncologist into allowing us to try. I began taking it and another one and praying all, you know, all kind of at the same time. Still, you know, a month or so had gone by and uh, it had not gone down. It had not stopped. It had begun to bleed from time to time. So I ended up in the emergency room just before February. I spent 10 days in intensive care. At the time we were leaving, the doctors had told my wife, you know, I probably should, she should probably call hospice maximum that uh, they predicted for me to come out of the hospital was maybe six months to live. I did not look good. I weighed 130, between 130 and 135 pounds. People started coming by to visit and see me, but I didn't realize at the time it was because they didn't think I was going to make it. I did myself, but I didn't appear that way to anybody. I did not believe I was, you know, dying. My friends thought I was delusional, but if you're looking at me, they wouldn't have thought that. I remember sitting right here, actually, I was in this chair right here, and they were right here, and we prayed a number of times. I could barely walk from that room. I had a hospital bed set up in there. I had uh, a nurse coming by weekly to see me. 
It wasn't long after that. It was probably a month, sometime in the middle of March. I kept believing, kept praying, praying morning, praying at night. I will not die, that I will live and declare the works of the Lord. Restore health to me and heal me of my wounds. I prayed these things over and over. I don't think a lot of people realize what kind of mental problems you can have when you're going through that kind of thing and everybody that's around you with your kids seeing what's going on and you're acting like you're gonna be fine and they're all they're all looking at you like dude you can't hardly walk you can't walk 15 feet within 30 days I think probably a couple of weeks I started feeling like I for sure was getting better after they had prayed for me and had prayed again uh, a little bit further into March and my numbers had started coming up a little not great but I knew they were myself I hadn't put any weight on anything necessarily, but um, have a little bit where I could walk a little farther. And um, they'd ask my wife on my phone, how was I doing five, six weeks after the first visit? And she said the tumor was considerably smaller and he's doing great. Thank you. They came out again. A lot of people that had been praying for me, I'm very thankful. Thank God. It's, and I give the glory to God. There's no question about it. If someone is out there that sees this, that, that has cancer, they're dealing with cancer or any other thing, what I would tell you is that God can do things and will do things that doctors cannot do. The easy thing to do is listen to, a, listen to a doctor, listen to oncologists that tell you, you must do this, you must do that. Sorry, there's no, there's no hope for you really because of this has not worked and that's not worked. Well, that's nonsense. God has the final say, in my opinion, and my kids would tell you the same thing. They've actually made the comment to my wife that those guys, he's, they've prayed themselves back to health. He's prayed himself back to life, just about. Almost nine months now, and uh, the cancer was gone out of my lungs. I just did another uh, x-ray and uh, doctor visit last week. Lungs were clear, no cancer in my side. There's a scar here uh, that looks like I had surgery, and there was no surgery done. And the tumor that was the size of a small Nerf football is not there any longer. Just thank God that I'm alive and uh, all, all the credit, all the glory goes to God.